Hey fam, MDB Million Dollar Batchmaker here again after a long and well-deserved break. Here to inform you about yet another chemical in the cosmetic and personal care space. And this one is a doozy, guys. Now guys, trust me when I say today's chemical is just notorious, uh, ubiquitous, SAT word, and so controversial that you honestly have to stay to the end of the video to get the full story. And you know what? I'll give you one hint as to what it is. It is made from a combination of coconut oil and some mystery chemicals that I definitely will cover in this episode. Give up? Well, it is cocomidal propyl betaine, guys. That's right, the infamous CAPB, right? We're gonna cover what is it, is it safe, and what's it used for, and maybe throw in some freebies just for your entertainment. Okay, stay tuned. Now, cocomidal propyl betaine, or simply cocobetaine, as I'll probably be referring to it for the rest of this video, is a surfactant, as I mentioned before, but more importantly, it is an amphoteric surfactant. Now, that word amphoteric, just keep that in mind. We're not gonna go into detail about it just yet until we cover the uh, broad uses of cocobetaine, but just keep it in the back of your head. For right now, let's just take a gander at the full chemical name of cocomidal propyl betaine. Look at that thing. I am not gonna say that because I don't wanna get a headache. And guys, for this reason, uh, cocoa betaine is usually abbreviated as simply C-A-P-B. So much simpler to say. Now, cocoa betaine usually comes in two concentrations when you're you know, buying it industrially. It's either in a 25% uh, concentration or a 35% concentration, which is why it's you know usually listed as CAPB25 or CAPB35. Um, is one better than the other? I, it just depends on the formulation and how you're using it. And now while we're on the subject, let's just get this out the way. Is cocoa betaine natural or synthetic? Well guys, I'm sorry to say if I'm gonna break your heart right now, but it is synthetic. Let's just go into detail about how it's made for a second. First, coconut oil is reacted with dimethylaminopropylamine, and then the resulting mixture is carboxylated. And the result is a surfactant that is, yes, synthetic, but also very mild, uh, has amazing foaming properties, just truly amazing. It's versatile, so it works with other ingredients very well. It is, uh, you know, it, it works along a large pH range. So that's amazing for a soap, which is why this chemical is just so, so popular. Now, a quick side note about uh, cocoa betaine's uh, popularity. You have to understand that cocoa betaine is not only used in personal care and cosmetics. It's also used, you know, for household products. Uh, some people have those fruit washes. Uh, don't be surprised if that has, you know, a combination of both cocoa betaine and some kind of uh, acids such as vinegar. Uh, they're also used in um, you know industrial applications. Cocoa betaine is a very good wetting agent as, as well as a foaming agent as I mentioned before. In fact a quick glance at Market Futures research indicated to me that you know the total cocoa betaine market is approaching four billion dollars and that the overall usage of this chemical might actually surpass or equal you know the uh, usage of you know certain very popular surfactants such as the infamous SLES or other sulfates that are becoming you know a big no-no to the average consumer. Now let's quickly dive into the unique characteristics that make cocoa betaine uh, so popular so out of this world ubiquitous SAT word. First and foremost we got to talk about the mildness the beautiful beautiful mildness if I'm holding some, you know, cocoa betaine, liquid cocoa betaine in my hand, it really doesn't cause irritation for a long time. Not as much irritation as you'd expect from, say, you know, sodium lauryl sulfate, any of the sulfates, in fact. The product is simply far milder and gentler on the skin. This, of course, will depend uh, on the concentration that you're using in your formulation. I believe the FDA and the EU recommend anywhere from 1 to 10% cocoa betaine in any formulation 
Uh, for personal care specifically, I believe it is lower at one to three or four percent. I personally never use more than three percent cocoa betaine in any formulation I create. Second characteristic is foaming. Yes, cocoa betaine, I'd say at this point is one of the primary drivers of you know creating foam in a lot of economical products on the marketplace right now especially at the higher end of the personal care usage that three to four percent range you can create some rich stable form stable that that that's important because foaming is not always stable under you know many conditions you'll notice this yourself when you're taking a shower and you know, the atmospherics around you are very humid. Working cocoa betaine into a lather is probably one of the easiest things you can do. Third characteristic, uh, compatibility. Now, this is where that term amphoteric that I mentioned earlier comes in. If you didn't know, a lot of surfactants come in, you know, three charges. That is anionic, cationic, and non-ionic. Now, cocoa betaine being amphoteric means that it can act as a positively charged cation, or it can also act as a negatively charged anion be depending on the pH value of the solution in which it's in. This consequently allows it to work with a bunch of other surfactants very nicely, you know, no separation at all. I can't tell you how much of a godsend that is when you're formulating. And fourth is of course a pH. Uh, cocoa betaine operates, you know, effectively across a large a pH range I believe as low as four and as high as 10. Uh, I believe the optimal range is between six and seven. When you get to the lower and higher end of the ranges, uh, the effects, the effectiveness of the foaming and the mildness, they kind of taper off. But generally speaking, you know, if, if you're a beginning formulator, you want to make that nice, um, you know, body wash or dog shampoo. Um, cocoa betaine is a beautiful choice. I, I would not disparage it. I'd, I'd go for it as maybe your uh, secondary surfactant, definitely. And now guys, for the biggest question of them all, is cocoa betaine safe? Well guys, I'm here to tell you almost unequivocally that yes, cocoa betaine should be considered safe by most of you using it out there. I mean, let's just lay down some pure facts. Cocoa betaine has been used almost continuously since the 1950s in almost every you know personal care and uh, cleaning product out there. And the number of cases where people have reported, you know, serious skin infections, rashes, uh, has been, you know, close to nil. In fact, I believe the only reason that the uh, FDA or the, you know, Cosmetic Review Board recommended that uh, cocoa betaine only be used uh, between one and I believe 4% in, you know, personal care and cosmetics is because of one study that indicated uh, cocoa betaine irritated uh, one person's conjunctivitis one person. And if you watch this channel, you know that the chances that a chemical or an essential oil, you know, natural or synthetic, uh, will irritate someone's skin. You know, there are nearly 8 billion people on the planet. The chance it will irritate someone's skin or give someone an allergic reaction is pretty high. That being said, if you suspect cocoa betaine or any surfactant or strange chemical is giving you any kind of uh, skin reactions, any lesions, anything like that, I would, suge I would suggest you stop using the product, consult your local physician to get a proper diagnostic workup. Always take care of your health first. Anyway guys, this has been another beautiful episode of Million Dollar Batch Maker. I hope I've informed you well enough to know everything you need to know about cocomidal propyl betaine. Uh, don't forget to uh, you know, like, subscribe, you know, leave a comment if you must. Also check out our website, alchemistexpress.com. There you can find, you know, products, soaps, including cocoa betaine, uh, castile soaps, dog shampoos, uh, a lot of things that you would need to, you know, start or maintain a personal care or cosmetics line. We also have courses, courses on how to, you know, approach e-commerce uh, in the personal care and cosmetics space, how to find manufacturers, everything you know. It's a cosmetics incubator, in my opinion. Once again, guys, I really hope you had a wonderful time. And just remember, keep formulating.